<laughs> oh my god, I thought I was gonna smash my teeth out. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to Saturdays with the Timmermans. I'm John Timmerman. And I'm Lindsay Dylan Timmerman. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. We're happy to have you. Today's show, we're going to do something pretty fun. So, Lindsay and I, when we're traveling, we're in the car, um, or we're just sitting at home and, you know, we want to just talk and not watch TV or something like that, we play questions, which <laughs> is just what it sounds like. We just ask each other <laughs> questions whatever questions like could be like super simple what do you want the weather to be like today i don't know like it could be anything or it could be super complicated and we could talk about life and like future and, and things like that so yep. we decided Lindsay actually had the idea to do a, a round of rapid fire questions today on the show be fun lighthearted. yeah something pretty, different probably pretty funny yeah yeah want to start are you ready want to rock paper scissors for who goes first okay Okay, best of three. You call it. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Ah. <laughs> One out. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Right, the thing. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Ah. First question. Ready. What's your favorite color? Gray. What's your favorite memory of your life that makes you laugh without fail? When when I was e even younger with a really good friend of mine, Ryan, who I grew up with when we were like, I don't know, probably like 10, 11, 12, somewhere around there, we used to go out into the back, his backyard butted up against a... Uh, uh, like farm, farmland, and we used to take his brother's dog out back and just sprint as fast as we could. Like it was a game. We used to sprint as fast as we could through the field, just waiting for his brother's dog to like take our legs out because he was like such a like happy go lucky dog and he always used to run around and like jump up and like play and like run after sticks and he was still kind of like a growing up puppy. So we used to just be like ready, set go and like full speed sprint and just dog's name was Skylar. Skylar used to run up next to us and behind us and like just weave in and out and like run around. I was just so happy that eventually he would like run into one of us and like take us out. And like that's the person that lost the game is the person that got taken out first. Skylar wins. So Skylar usually won. Yes. <laughs> but that makes me laugh every time I think of that because again, pretty ridiculous. Yeah. Pretty good description of my childhood. Yep. Next question. What's your spirit animal and why? <laughs> the the one thing I can say, or the first thing at least in this short time frame that comes to mind is I think I like most quickly connect with like a gazelle, right? They're like lean and they run really fast. And I think I ru like I run or I go fast when I really want to, but they're also like hopping and they make it look like joyful and I'm always looking for like the happy and the positive. And sometimes they're stressed out if they're like a lion is chasing them. Being chased, yeah. yeah. Like, or they're about to be eaten or something. Like I can get a little worked up and stressed out when I feel like things are overwhelming. But for the most part, I just like go fast and I like change direction quickly. And I just feel like there's like a lightness. I don't really know if that's my true spirit animal, but for today, that's my answer. Today you're a gazelle. Today I think I connect with the gazelle. <laughs> What's one thing that business has taught you about yourself? That uh, I am capable of focus. <laughs> <laughs> that my ADHD, like, like it's truly, and I've researched this more in my adulthood, but like with ADHD, no matter what level or, you know, to what depth you have it, like when you find something that you really enjoy, that will focus you. So business has taught me that I am capable of focus and I'm also capable of being on time. Thank you very much, dad. 
and Lindsay. That's questionable. And everybody else that I grew up with. <laughs> <laughs> All the rest of you. Yeah. Yeah. It's possible. That's so, what you're saying. Yeah. I'm, I'm in business. I'm often on time, unless something comes up and like, I have to like cancel a meeting because another meeting is more important or something like that. Like, you know, there's priorities of all, always, but like, I'm, I'm often on time for things that I really need to be on time for in business. Yep. And I'm very focused on the priorities and the things that need to happen. Yep. So those are things that outside of business, I was the opposite of. Mm -hmm. To all of our friends out there. We still love you. You are really important to us. So when we're late, it's not because you're not important. <laughs> <laughs> ha! We! So, uh, it's both of us. It's both of us. I didn't say I wasn't late. That's true. Good answer. Okay. Good proof. <laughs> Along the lines of business, okay. uh, my next question is, if you could start any business in the world without worrying about like funding, financing, like repercussions, like anything, right? If it's just purely like, oh, that'd be awesome to do that. Mm. What would it be? Yeah. So, okay. If funding was not an <laughs> issue, I have this amazing, life-changing idea. And I think my stipend for the clothing should be included, right? My idea would be to have uh, an app that streams to your phone that connects to whatever show you're watching and or you could have some settings in there to send you notifications that the clothing in the show would be linked to the app so that you could directly buy the same outfit that you see one of your favorite characters wearing. You know, so um, like somebody that's known for a lot of her like outfits was um, uh, Juliana Margulies' character from The Good Wife and um, Robin Wright from uh, House of Cards. They're kind of known for those like staple outfits. So if there's an app when you're watching the show that you could click the link in for that episode and it shows you all the outfits um, and then you just save your credit card, add to cart and it ships it to your house. And then there was also a feature where it was like, this is the exact outfit, but then here are a number of like lookalike outfits. So if those are a little bit more cost efficient, then it ranges to a, um, a wider bracket or um, demographic of customers and it fits into your budget. That would save me so much headache. I would love, love to make that app. Of course, I really want us to make it so nobody, like unless you want to help us. I want that app I was app just going to say, so you actually bad. probably wouldn't even be that mad if somebody actually went and made this thing because then you could use it. Yeah. Done. I'm going to edit in a flashing thing along the bottom that says, call 1-800-LINDSAY <laughs> to invest in yes, app company. She is ready for your call. <laughs> Please call. Please give me some financing. <laughs> What's your favorite food? French fries. Really? Okay. You knew this. Yeah. I thought you were going to say crunchy. No. <laughs> food group. <laughs> I said, I, the first time we met, My I favorite said, food group is crunchy. Anything. <laughs> All of it. All of crunchy. <laughs> what is your favorite exercise? I don't think this is your question, but this is how I'm choosing the answer. My favorite exercise is reflection, where I challenge myself to ask myself, what did you learn from so, this So, mental experience? exercise. <laughs> yes. All right, I'll take it. <laughs> what character or person or combination of people do you think best represents you as a person? Like TV character? Like TVs, movies, animated characters, historical figures, if there's like a celebrity. I feel like I would pick, I feel like I would pick George Clooney. <laughs> You're just flattering yourself, aren't you? <laughs> no, so I feel like I would pick George Clooney because we have, uh, yeah, we've heard that he like out of all the actors, and I guess we said actors, not necessarily actresses, but like all the actors out there, um, we have some people that are in the TV and movie industry, and they said that George Clooney, out of all the people they met, is the most down to earth, just the most genuine, the coolest, like, you know, sort of level headed, right? You hear a lot, somebody gets famous, it goes to their head, they start treat treating people like they're lesser, they're not as important. So I feel like George Clooney, Clooney not only does he always play like a calm, cool, collected character, mm -hmm. but he just sounds like somebody who's genuinely like cares about people and like 
you know, doesn't let success go to their head. And like, obviously I'm not anywhere close to like financial or famous or anywhere near George Clooney. So I'm not saying that part, but I feel like if I was to be in his place, like I'd be the same way. Right. Like, like, um, like, temperament and yeah, persona yeah. is like a similar, like if Jackson Joby turns into a hundred million dollar company, when Jackson Hashtag Joby turns into a hundred million dollar <laughs> company, like, I feel like I'm not going to spend money on like Ferraris and Lamborghinis, you know, we will have a very nice house, but, um, that's only for the family. That's the that's reason right. why. It's an exception. Uh, but yeah, like, I don't know, like material things aren't like a huge focus for me. Like I love building the business and I love that. Like, so I wouldn't let the money or even like fame go to my head. I'd like to think so at least. So George Clooney in the movies, cause he's calm, cool and collected. And I usually pretty calm, cool, and collected, wouldn't you agree? Like yeah. in situations that maybe or should be stressful. Yeah. And I'd like to think that I treat everybody with respect. Yep. Yeah. You do. John is the calmest, coolest, and the most collected out of anybody I've ever met. It's true. Thanks, Mom. Good job, Donna. <laughs> and Dad. Yeah, they and both. <laughs> they both were. <clears throat> What's your biggest pet peeve? Hmm. I think my biggest pet peeve um, is people that are arrogant and people that are very full of themselves. I don't know. But I also recognize and like I have to, you know, work through and I remind myself that, you know, everybody's got their stuff. Everybody's working on their own stuff. And this, you know, when I see somebody that's arrogant, I've gotten myself to a point now where I try to remind myself like, there, there is more depth to that person than that. This is just their front and for whatever reason, like maybe this is how they're presenting themselves to you or to other people around them or to the world because they have their own stuff underneath. So mm -hmm. it is a major pet peeve of mine, but I also know that, you know, most of the time that's just a front for the other stuff that they hide that they don't want other people to see. Ready? Don't cheat. Look at you, babe. <laughs> okay. Um, what is one of your most favorite memories with me? Uh, going to Jingle Jam on our first date. <laughs> and That's one of your favorite memories? Going to Jingle Jam on our first date and <laughs> literally being the oldest people there except for the moms who were bringing the 12 and 13 year old girls to the concert because they couldn't drive yet. Yep. That was the first thing that popped into my head. <laughs> uh, you can bring three things to an island that you know you're going to be stranded on for the rest of your life. What do you bring? Oh. I would bring a water filtration system so that I can like clean and replenish my own water. I can use whatever water is available. Good one. I would bring some like tools, tools. Okay. <laughs> like Hammer, shovel, nails, and kitchen tools. Technically, that's multiple Knives, things. Knives, a couple bowls. Three. Kitchen tools. Kitchen tools. Tools. <laughs> tools. 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 From the kitchen like and tool to time. build the house. Like tool time. Yeah, like a, with like, like a, a knife. Yeah, Like a thing. suitcase. Yep. You can go buy at Lowe's or Home Depot yes. with a bunch of tools. Okay, got and it. And on the back side, like knives. <laughs> For the kitchen. So a tool kit with kitchen tools. I can bring any three things. I can make it up. Okay. Okay. And the third would be soap. Soap. So I could clean my hands. I could clean the dishes. I could clean like all the things. Yeah. And then I won't like have, I'll l decrease the likelihood of infections. Soap and an emergency um, first aid kit. That's four things. So inside my first aid kit, we'll go with soap. Is also soap. Okay, fine. <laughs> what are three songs on your soundtrack for life? One, "Dead or Alive" by Bon Jovi, <laughs> which is also his go-to karaoke song. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Get a couple cocktails in me, and that song's coming out. Done. Bye. A Metallica song. Fade to black. Okay. Or one. 
one by Metallica. Okay. Which I actually don't even know the meaning of the song. <laughs> so I hope it's not anything terrible, but it's like a super long song. It like builds up from nothing. And it's like all, all instrumental. Imagine Dragons, the song where he's singing about like everyone that like doubted him growing up. Um, it's a super popular song. Comment below if you know what song I'm talking about. We're definitely going to Google it after this. Imagine Dragons, the song where he's singing about uh, everyone that doubted him in high school and like growing up and like he always knew that what he was going to achieve and he always knew like exactly where he wanted to be and like now, they're, assuming they wrote it, he wrote it. Like now he's achieved like the amazing like dreams that he had and he's kind of singing back like saying like he always knew it. Mm -hmm. So imagine dragons, fill in the blank of this song. <laughs> I'll write it in the comments below once we figure it out. Unless you guys comment below what the heck the song is because I can't think of it right now. But those three songs. Okay. Live forever and maybe accomplish everything you want. Or live only the next 20 years and guaranteed to accomplish everything you want. That's a hard question. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, man, I just like vacillated back and forth between both <laughs> answers about six times. Um, my initial instinct was to live forever so that I can enjoy the process, see the world. There is no gar guarantees in life, which is something I find extra challenging. Um, but at the same time, if I know I have 20 years, the sense of urgency would kick in. It would be nice to have the guarantee that I'd be able to accomplish everything. But also I think it would give me the strongest sense of like, I don't have time for this shit. I only have 20 years. Like, screw this. I'm not doing this. No, I'm not going to do things out of like guilt or, or forced overwhelming obligation anymore. Like, I only have 20 years. It would really push me to live every single day, which I guess we should be doing now. <laughs> To make sure that starting now every day from here moving forward or the next 20 years would be maximized to make the most amazing possible what's something you want to do or a place you want to visit in the next five years uh i'd like to build our own house in the next five years yeah Goals. i mean not literally me building the <laughs> house but like i'd like to like <laughs> with you like design our house and like pick things out and like I know it's going to be a lot of decisions and it's probably going to get to the point where it's just like, we just want this thing built. Yeah. But like, I think that would be super cool is like creating our own house that like we're going to live in. Yeah. Hopefully forever or for a long time. Yep. And I think that makes sense. Like I'm a very practical person. Like, <laughs> you know, I don't like dream like of things that aren't practical to life. Right. Hence me not wanting like a Lamborghini, but like, a house you're spending so much time in you're sleeping there like you're spending a third of your life there or whatever however long you sleep so like yeah yeah house uh wine or chocolate for the rest of your life you can have one or the other but not both wine red wine <laughs> cabernet yeah okay so it's safe to say that our wedding weekend was one of the true highlights of her whole life. What was one of your most cherished moments of the whole weekend? Of our wedding weekend? Yeah. Um, I mean, actually the moment of getting married to <laughs> is the obvious one. I know, but you don't, I'm not, you're, you're not forced or obligated to like say that one. Well, I would say like, that's the one. Okay. Like the actual moment of like marrying you. Cause like, I don't know, like leading up to it was uh, all the planning and and all the moving pieces, like being put into place. And then like once we were married, like it sort of felt like, you know, not that it wasn't all fun. I mean, you were, you know, you were stressed out. And, like there's <laughs> lots of pieces and things like that, right? And like we wanted to make sure everything was perfect. But then like once it was actually like they were like our our officiant right mm -hmm. the officiant was like 
I now pronounce you husband and wife. Like now it's sort of like the feeling and anybody who's been married, like you sort of know what I'm talking about. Like you feel that feeling of like, wow. Okay. Like all this planning is like led up to this moment. Like now we're married and it's, I don't know, in my brain, I'm sort of like, okay, let's party. Like literally <laughs> let's go party. But then also it's sort of like, all right, like let's build our life. Yeah. You know? Okay. This is your last question. Okay. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> 100 dogs oh God. or 100 kids? Mm. And it's all or nothing? You, two doors. <laughs> this two door concept. Well, I like a little bit of both. No, that's not the question. You either get and have to take care of 100 dogs. Let's say this. You don't have to actually have all the kids. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't make me a pregnant for 100 years. That's awful. <laughs> that's like torture. <laughs> Okay, yeah, you have like you how know, about like three, ten or ten? Three or four of them. Nope, hundred dogs, or one hundred kids. And how do I have them? Well, I don't know. Adopt them or whatever. Question is literally impossible. I have no idea. My heart goes to uh, rescuing a hundred dogs because I feel like the dogs are already here. I love dogs. I have a huge soft spot for dogs, and I feel like they are just need a place they just need to be taken in they just need some love and i feel like if the kids aren't born then like i'm, I'm not really abandoning them <laughs> i don't know it's literally the hardest question you've ever asked me i that's why i was number 10. i know so i say neither it's my life i get to decide what i want and i want both end of story you want 200 beings to care for if you are gonna make me choose one or the other then absolutely i choose oh, both she went all in yep that's right go bigger but go home thankfully all of our companies are going to be uber successful so we can build apparently this massive house it's gonna house one two plus a hundred plus a hundred you notice all of our answers are really aligned here like yeah like we all like, of this might actually happen <laughs> Do I have one more left or is that it? Yes, one more. What's something you're most proud of? The way I was raised. Because I feel like without that, like I can only control the things that I can control in life, which usually stem from me and like what I'm thinking. So like the way I handle situations or the decisions that I make, like that's really all anyone can do in life, right? You can't control if somebody else is being an asshole. You can't control if like a hurricane hits, you can't control any of that kind of stuff. Right. So like, I feel like if I wasn't, I didn't have the DNA that I have or was raised the way that I was like, I wouldn't have that mindset or be able to make the decisions that I can make or do make. And they're not all right or wrong or anything, like, you know, whatever. But like, that's what I'm most proud of because I feel like that's what's going to allow me to live the best. Live my best life. Hashtag. Let's go. Work We're out. out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I thought I was going to smash my teeth out. <laughs>
I don't think I think I gotta go back a little bit. My feet were also on the concrete. This is probably our most ridiculous one. No, not probably, definitely. Gotta step it up each time. Okay. Okay. Um. Let's! Okay. Now you put your. Yeah, can you take your shoes off? Yes. Okay. Okay. This is ridiculous. Oh my gosh. Are you ready? Yeah, I'll go wait a bit easier on you. <laughs> Oh, good lord. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna fall down my knee. No, you're not. Come on. Are you ready? Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay, now look to the side and say go. Go! <laughs> Alright, push ups. Ready? And then I'll go one, two, one, two, three. Look and go work We're out! out. <laughs> oh my god, I thought I was going to smash my teeth out. <laughs>